Good morning everyone, it's Mark Weens with Migrationology.com and EatingThaiFood.com. I'm in Bangkok, Thailand and when you visit Bangkok, it's a good idea to plan out your Saturdays because there are a number of attractions and a number of things that are only open on the weekends. One of the things that is only open on the weekends are floating markets. Uh, at least most, most of the floating markets around Bangkok are just open on Saturday and Sunday. And so it is a bright, sunny Saturday morning and Ying and I are heading to a floating market this morning, first thing. From our hotel, we just walked over to Pra Atit Pier on the Chao Phraya River. We are gonna catch the Chao Phraya Express boat down to Sapan Taksin. And then from there, we will take the BTS to, I think we'll go to Bangwa, which is the end station. And then from there, we'll have to take a taxi. Okay, we just made it to Sapan Taksin. We're gonna go take the BTS to Bangwa. And now we are crossing over the river that we just took the boat on. Okay, we jumped in a taxi and we are on our way to Talat Nam Klong Lap Mayom, which is a floating market within Bangkok. I haven't been there in a couple of years, but it's, um, it's kind of a Thai touristy floating market. And so lots of people come on the weekends to hang out and to leisurely stroll around and eat. And I think that took about 15 minutes in the taxi and cost just 80 baht and that journey to get to this market uh, really built up my appetite. I am pretty hungry, so I think we might sit down to eat something first. We got here at about 10 a.m. and it's already starting to get really busy, but in a couple of hours from now, it will be like crazy busy but there is a lot and a lot of food to choose from. There's grilled chicken, grilled fish, all sorts of seafood, all sorts of snacks, and just, yeah, you can choose from a, an abundance of delicious looking and smelling food and everything, yeah, everything looks good. I think we are gonna start with a grilled fish, which in Thai is called pa pao, and this is just a massive, huge grilled fish store at the market, stall at the market. It almost looks like a, like a pizza store, but the Thai version with grilled fish. This is something truly amazing. I have just come around to the back kitchen where they are grilling all the fish, and there must be literally like a dozen half barrel grills all filled with fish that reaches like the line of horizon. This is kind of a food court section where you can find a table. They have these bamboo tables. And so the canal is right next to where we're sitting, but we're not sitting right on the canal. We're in this little food court area. And yeah, food looks amazing. This one is called Gung Obun Sen. And this is a great dish. It is mung bean noodles and shrimp. And they are cooked in a little, um, in a little personal pot and he's already put it on a plate to serve it, uh, but that's the way it's cooked, and it's actually, um, yeah, just really highlights the shrimp, and then usually there's some black pepper, and I can actually really smell the ginger, and maybe some sesame oil in here. That's what, I can really smell that, and then it's served with this beautiful looking, chunky, garlicky, chili green sauce. Um, I'm gonna start with this just because it is starting to get, when it gets cold, it starts to get like, like clumpy. So let me add a little bit of that. Oh, the sauce looks fantastic. Put some of that sauce on, and let me start with the, the noodles. Oh, that's so good. The noodles have a really nice uh, black pepper flavor to them, and then with that sauce, um, that sauce is very garlicky, a little bit spicy, and a little bit sour and sweet at the same time. And then you gotta follow those noodles with a jumbo shrimp and peel this guy. Let me actually, let me pull off the head and eat that first. Detach. Oh, it's still hot. Okay, I'm gonna eat the contents of the head first and you can already see that kind of buttery stuff. Oh, look at that. All that buttery goodness. Okay, I'm gonna eat this. Oh, 
that shrimp butter is ridiculously good. It's so creamy and just has like a slightly bitter shrimpy flavor to it. That's a good size. And then I'm gonna dunk him into the sauce. Oh, and I got a, I got a noodle attached. And I might need my chopsticks to, to help here. There we go. Oh yes. <laughs> oh yes, shrimp are one of my favorite things in the world. And I think I have some juice going down my chin. It's firm, it's, it's wonderful. And then that sauce is actually very good. It, it gives like a little zinginess to your tongue. This is one of the best things to eat at a floating market, which is bapao, which is a roasted fish. And Thai style, it's salt crusted and then grilled. And this one, and it's also filled with lemongrass inside of the, the mouth as well as maybe some kaffir lime leaves. This type of fish is a snakehead fish, which in Thai is called a pla chon. And this is one of the popular types of fish. Let me, usually you just peel back the skin. Oh, and they've already pre-cut it a little bit. Oh, and you just reveal all that, that meaty flesh of the fish. Okay, I'm just gonna take a piece of the fish and then I will dip it into the sauce. And then there are two different sauces. This one is the typical Nam Jim seafood, which is the Thai seafood sauce. And then this one could be a number of different things. It looks kind of like a tamarindy sauce, but I will go with the typical uh, seafood sauce first. Dip. Ha <laughs> ha. I could eat pa pao every day. Oh, it's so good. The fish is so moist, and snakehead fish is a very firm, well not very firm, but it kind of has like a, a little bit of like a, a rubbery component to it. But very, not, not, not in a bad way, in a very good way. But like when you chew your teeth, you can sort of like feel that like little elasticity, elasticity in your teeth. Okay, I'm going in for another bite. Oh, that might be a bony bite, so I better take from up here. Okay. Okay, let me test out that next sauce. That looks like a barbecue sauce. Oh no, I lost some of my fish. Oh. Mm. oh, okay. I know immediately what that sauce, what is in that sauce. Um, in Thai, it's called Meng Da, which is in English a giant water bug and it's used in some sauces to give it kind of a, a licorice fragrance. And yeah, they're from, they kind of look like cockroaches, but they're called giant water bugs. And I like it. That's kind of a sweet barbecue sauce, but with that extra like licorice flavor from the bug. And Ying could not resist ordering some fried chicken wings, so I may as well have one. <laughs> Okay. That is pretty tasty. It's nice and salty. The grilled fish also comes with vegetables on the side. So let me grab a couple of these. These are Chinese long beans. And let me dip it into that, that water beetle sauce. That essence of the water bug. It's so unique. I love it. The body of that fish has disappeared way too fast and all that's left is his ugly snake head head and, and his um, like outer skin and salt crust. Uh, but that was a delicious fish. And the gung opun sen, those shrimp were crazy good as well. We are off to a wonderful start. And I think now we're just gonna walk around for a little bit and we might take a boat. <laughs> Okay, you got a duck so you don't hit your head on this pole. Oh, we're going underneath the bridge right now. We just decided to join the group tour and this is a, on a long tail boat. We're gonna go through the canal. They said it takes about an hour and a half and we will stop for about 30 minutes at a homestay just to walk around and maybe kind of a farm. I have no idea. 
we'll see how this is. Uh, but we are sitting in the boat now, waiting for everybody to fill in. Whoa. And there are swarming fish below me. Um, and we are off. It is really good to be in the boat. There's a nice cool breeze and we are just passing through the canal and there are houses on some sides or well, passing under a bridge now and then there are lots of trees and vegetation. Uh, feels like we are far removed from Bangkok here. The boat just dropped us off in a little uh, canal neighborhood and really nice and peaceful and most people are walking around kind of a homestay house over there and I'm gonna go walk around now but also just taking a look at this canal yeah it would be great to relax and live in a neighborhood like this We are just kind of walking around some of these houses in this neighborhood and conveniently located at this house is a little coffee shop and I am in desperate need of a cold coffee right now. <sighs> oh, that's refreshing. We are still walking through the forest on some little paths and we're supposed to be finding the boat somewhere. Oh, here's a... Here's a little sign right behind me and we're trying to find the boat but it's really beautiful back here really nice and relaxing yeah I could I could definitely live in a place like this in the countryside on the outskirts of Bangkok That was actually very enjoyable and for only 50 baht, that was well worth it. Uh, I just liked riding in the boat and going past people's homes and just going past fruit trees. Yeah, that was really worth it. I enjoyed that. We were just walking through the market and saw a stall selling a type of grilled chicken called Gai Gale. And this is uh, from Southern Thailand. It's grilled chicken with a coconut barbecue sauce. This type of grilled chicken is actually not easy to find in Bangkok, but it's very popular in the South. So whenever we see it in Bangkok, we gotta go for it. Oh, oh, oh. oh that's awesome actually. That is just like a uh, normal grilled chicken, but then that sauce is, uh, it's a little bit sweet. It has a coconut milk richness to it. And then you can taste those red chilies in there as well. It's really good. <laughs> I think I have barbecue sauce all over my cheeks now. Mm. That's good. This is a type of variety of pineapple that is really small, only about the size of a kind of like a pool ball. And yeah, they're really juicy and really sweet and they are from the north of Thailand. And so what they do is they kind of like swirl cut them to get out all of those pineapple eyes and then they just cut them into wedges so you can eat them with the stem so you have a little handle like a little drumstick. And then you can just kind of eat the whole thing in one bite. Oh, that is incredibly sweet mm. and really juicy and also really nice and crisp as well. Ying just bought something called Khao Lam, which is a mixture of sticky rice with coconut milk and sugar and sometimes there's beans in it as well. And then it is filled into a uh, piece of bamboo, a pole of bamboo, and then it's roasted over fire. As soon as you buy it, then they crack open the bamboo and revealing the sticky rice. Oh, it's still nice and hot. Oh yes, and we got the we got the uh, black sticky rice. You may have seen me eating this in other videos, but it's one of Ying's favorite Thai snacks. And the bottom is less sweet, 
while the top is more sweet because all that like coconut milk and sh sugar tends to rise to the top. So I'm gonna go for a little bite in the middle. Oh, look how goopy that is. Oh, look at that. And you can actually really smell that roasted, kind of green roasted aroma coming off of it. Oh yeah. That's pretty good. It's really sticky, almost like goopy. And then you can taste that rich coconut milk. It's a little bit sweet. And yeah, it's all about that texture and that roasted bamboo aroma. We just finished at the market and I think that is probably one of my favorite floating markets in, in the Bangkok area, Talat Nam Klong Lap Mayom. It has a good mixture of everything and it really is a food lover's paradise. So if you love to eat, that is a great uh, trip to make when you come to Bangkok. And I also actually was pleasantly surprised at that boat trip tour. It was a good break in between eating. So we just jumped in a taxi. We are gonna head back to our hotel now and probably take a rest this afternoon Afternoon. We made it back to Banglampu and riding the taxi we just took, decided to take a taxi all the way back here and that was well worth it. It only took like 20 minutes and I think it was 120 baht. Uh, so depending on where you're staying in Bangkok it might be worth it just to take a taxi directly to Kong Lap Mayom floating market instead of doing the boat and BTS combination like we did to get there. We spent a couple of hours back at the hotel and now we are walking out. Might head over to a street called Dinsaw to get some dinner. And then from there, we may go to another market and then to the flower market later this evening. We couldn't decide where to eat, so we ended up just coming to this restaurant which is called Sa Na Wang which is uh, a restaurant that I've actually recently been to, uh, but the food is good. And they are very famous for a dish called mikashet, which is stir-fried rice noodles uh, with uh, water mimosa. And then I got it with chicken, and he literally stir-fries this in like a, a serious fire wok, and just smoke pours out of the wok. And you can see it has like some crunchy noodles, that mix of like crunchy noodles and soft noodles, the vegetable, the chicken, yeah, this is a, a really stunning dish. And I actually, I'm gonna add some of the Priknampla to it. This is also extremely good Priknampla. Uh, it has shallots in it, and then it also has uh, lime juice in it, not just fish sauce. And the only reason I didn't taste it before adding that is because I, I yeah, I ate here recently, so I know it, I know it tastes amazing with that. just crazy good. The noodles are a little bit crunchy and then some of them are soft and some of them are crunchy um, and then the vegetable the water mimosa is nice and crisp and then with that like sour fish sauce from lime juice and chilies and to go along with that I also got some plapad kun chai and this is uh, fish stir fried with Chinese celery and green onions. Oh, that's hot right out of the wok. Mm. Oh, that's good too. The fish is deep fried, so it has that fried skin around it. And then that's nice and salty as well. And then finally, this is just a plate of stir fried vegetables, mostly cabbage. I will put some of this onto my noodles. And add a little vegetable, a little more vegetables to this meal. I'm gonna need some more of this sauce though. This is award winning. That was good. Simple, but good food. And those stir fried uh, thin rice noodles are, yeah, they're stunning. Uh, I think we are gonna, from here, go to Sapan Food Market. This 
market gets its name from the bridge, uh, which is uh, an old green, I think it's iron bridge, uh, but every night there is a market here, maybe except for Monday nights. Uh, but anyway, this market is especially known for youth culture, and so like a lot of street shopping and street fashion and lots of young people and motorcycle racing and all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, you can come here out here and walk around, uh, but just be careful around here as well. And I think from here we're gonna head over to Pak Kong Talat, which is the flower market. So there's not a whole lot to do at Sapan Put, uh, unless you're looking for the latest in youth fashion. Uh, but right across the street is the flower market called Pak Kong Talat. And so that's where we are gonna head now. It's only about 10 p.m. and the flower market is busiest at about like 12 midnight to to about 2 a.m. or so, or throughout the night. Uh, but we're gonna go check it out now and see see the flowers. Just underneath these tents, I can just smell the sweet aroma of all sorts of different flowers. And there's just, yeah, there's just a sea, an abundance of roses and marigolds and a lot of flowers, I have no idea what they are, but an abundance of flowers. And then we'll probably walk through here, and then across the street there's a big, uh, like more covered market area. This is just kind of on the sidewalk. This is Bangkok's biggest flower distribution market, and many people that sell flowers around Bangkok, they will come to this market at night or very, very early in the morning and get their supply of flowers and then go back to their parts of town to sell them. It's at 10 p.m. right now and it's pretty busy and lots and lots of flowers, but if you come, the peak time is around midnight to throughout the night. And so you gotta come at night, but a really cool place to see when you are in Bangkok. I think we are pretty tired, so we are gonna head home from here. So I'm gonna end the vlog for today here. Uh, but thank you all very much for watching today's vlog and if you enjoyed it please remember to give it a thumbs up and also leave a comment below and I will see you tomorrow for the next vlog from Bangkok.